Hey kid, what's wrong? Every time you do a Halloween video, you kill me. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Tonight, I won't. So wipe those tears, kiddo. And you too, horror fam. For tonight, I bring you a story that simply weeps with the wet stuff. A tasty morsel that I like to call the crying head. Some people get really into Halloween. Like, a little too much. I was one of those people. I'm in my late teens, but the thrill of the spooky season fills me with an enthusiasm I just can't deny. So, I dress up every year. And beyond that, I also go door-to-door trick-or-treating. Yes, I get told all too often that maybe I'm a little too old for trick-or-treating. That maybe it's time I hang up the mask for good, so to speak. But I never listen, especially when it goes against my wants and desires. So this year was no different as I donned my costume and took to the streets. Well, no different at first. The best part about trick-or-treating is the front yard displays, elaborate and detailed. Some people just went all out, and you can tell they love the holiday as much as I do. As I neared the end of our neighborhood, at the end of a long and dark street, resided a huge and unusually vacant house. Well, someone must have bought it, because the place was bedazzled with macabre decorations and thematic terrors unlike any other I had seen so far. I mean, this guy really went all out making his house look like an abandoned mental asylum. There were bars on all the windows, a decrepit mental institution sign out front, and the man who answered the door even wore a long lab coat, his head topped with what looked like a gray and frizzy wig. This guy was an evil scientist. I knocked on his door originally with the intention of attaining some candy and wishing him a good night. But he took one look at me, told me I looked older than most trick-or-treaters, and affirmed that my love for the dark and mysterious matched his own. And that's when I heard it. (sighs) The moaning and agonized sounds coming from within his home. I assumed it was likely part of the man's special house effects, or maybe a movie that he was watching on TV, as I listened on curiously. He took note, looking over his shoulder at something out of sight, and then back at me, asking if I wanted to see something really neat. Of course, this was a bad idea under any circumstance, but this is a safe neighborhood, and I'm no small child prime for abduction. Besides, whatever was making that odd sound had my intrigue held fast. Accepting his invite, I stepped inside to which he pointed to my left in the corner of the living room. Leaving the man by the front door, I looked at what he was pointing at and found myself mindlessly walking closer. I couldn't believe what I saw. Atop a crudely made table, hooked into various electrodes with leash-like wires running from them, was the most realistic severed head I had ever seen. Bits of sinew, meat and veins hung loosely below the jawline, dripping pools of crimson into a small tray-like pan beneath. His eyes somehow blankly focused upon me, and the thing even moved its jaw, opening and closing slowly as it moaned in perpetual pain. But something was wrong. The thing seemed almost too real and I found myself paralyzed by terrible implications. But before I could turn away or make any other decision of movement, the thing spoke. In agonized speech that shouldn't be possible, the thing begged me, Please, just let me die. I don't want a new body. I had no idea at the time what this truly meant, the real meaning behind it all. I had no idea that when I had entered and approached this abomination, that the man behind me had already closed the door, and was now standing behind me. 
My fate, just like the talking head before me, was out of my control. He would have his new body. He was looking at it. Oh, well, some promises are made to be broken, I suppose. Made you look, though. But if you'd like to see vengeance served for such heinous misleads, make sure to stop back again tomorrow for night 10 of this cadaver caravan. Well, kid, maybe next time.